Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking, just to tell you that I do not know how a plane works. What? You don't know how a plane works? No, I'm a toy. But I wanted to learn about them. But that's okay, I know a great place where I can learn everything about planes. Really? Yeah, and it's right there! Hi, I'm Kitty. Ready, set, and grow. Hey, it's me, Kitty. K-I-D-I. Kitty, and I'm so happy to see you again. Today, we're gonna learn everything there is to know about planes. about them, we're here at the National Air and Space Museum of France. I hope you're ready to learn, because I know I am. <laughs> now, see this? This is the outside of the air traffic control. This is where they tell all the planes where to go because there is airplane traffic and you don't want a collision now, do you? Now, planes have many different roles in today's society. Here, you have military planes. As you can see there, you have a jet fighter. It has a really pointy nose in order to be really, really fast. And here, you have a commercial plane. Those are for us when we want to go on holidays. And this one here is for postal services. Every time you order something online or you will send a letter to your grandmother, it will go in this plane. This plane does not carry any passenger. It has a huge empty belly in which it will fit all the little parcels and letters you are sending through the post office. And on the other side, you have a private jet. This is for extremely rich or important people. And this is to not, you know, be with everyone else. This is for four to five people on board. And they go really, really fast. And here you have my favorite plane, the Canada. It's yellow, like a duckling. <laughs> now, the Canada is very important as it has a very important job. This whole plane is actually a water tank and it's used to fight fires. How do you fill it up? Well, not with a hose because it would take ages. No, this is even better. You see those flaps? They are open last minute when the aeroplane just dives and just goes above the lake or any body of water and will suck in the water and fill the tank up like that. And then it will fly over a fire and blah, let all the water fall down in order to extinguish the fire. And the best part of it is, it's yellow, like me. <laughs> and look, this is the tail of the biggest plane in the world, the A380. It's, it's huge. Look at that! It's bigger than a cathedral and it flies! As you can see, you have three little parts going on either side and one on the top. And they also have rudders, just like those wings, to help, you know, guide the plane. You know, left, right, up, down. Look at those wings! They're so big and long! And that's because, of course, you need them to fly. And most importantly, they are also used as fuel tanks to fuel those engines. And look at those wheels. Whoa! Of course, you need huge wheels with those huge legs in order to support such a plane. And wheels are necessary because of course you need to drive the plane on the runway and you know, for the takeoff, 
you know the plane isn't always in the air, it needs to take off, so it needs to roll on the ground, and then you, once it has enough speed, whoosh, it starts flying, and most importantly, you need them to land, otherwise <laughs> you're stuck in the air. Look at those! Just there. You can see the whole system right there, all the space dedicated to putting those wheels up inside. As you can see, those ones are slide in on the side like this, whereas those ones just go like that. Isn't that neat? When you look up into the sky, you'll see other things flying around. Not just birds and planes, but also helicopters. Helicopters zip around because of their spinning propellers fixed on top. It means they can lift off straight up in the air. It makes them just the right thing for rescuing people or chasing robbers. By looking closely at birds, people realized that a special plane could glide on the air. The glider hasn't got an engine. It is given a piggyback into the air by another plane and then glides slowly back to Earth, surfing on the air. If you're feeling really brave, you could take to the skies with a hang glider. It's kind of like a giant kite. You'll have to jump off a cliff and you'd better not be afraid of heights. So you should probably ask your mummy if it's okay first. <laughs> oh, that's pretty high. How do I board a plane? Well, there's a neat little thing called a truck. Look at this little guy over there. See, it comes and it has this staircase, which will latch on to the plane in order for passengers like me to board it. Let's go. Welcome aboard KD Airlines first, it's Boeing 747. Come, come. Now, if you've never been inside of a plane, this is how it could look like. <laughs> now, as you can see, there are many seats, all numbered in rows, A, B, C, D, E, and then you have numbers of rows and stuff like that. Of course, it's marked on your ticket where you have to sit. As you can see, on your different seats, you have, of course, for security, belt buckles. Now, unlike a car, you don't have to wear them for the entire trip. You can take them off. The only moment where it's mandatory is at takeoff and landing and whenever the captain says that you should really put them because sometimes a plane can, you know, be a bit <laughs> shaky. Also, for entertainment purposes, because, you know, some planes can fly for a really, really long time. Some, you know, 18 hours and 40 minutes, that's long. So, you can have little screens with little remotes in order to, you know, play games. <laughs> now, of course, one thing which is really cool with planes is windows, so that you can actually see the sky and the clouds and the whole world. Look at them. And of course, if you're sleepy, you can always close them and... Whew. And you know what? I'm a bit warm, but that's okay. Because of course, there is a thermostat in the plane so to keep us comfortable. And as you can see just here, you have little air blowers to cool you down. And because sometimes it gets really warm. And you also have some light here if you want to read because those trips, as I said, can be very, very long. And you also have, of course, indication from the captain to remind you what to do, what not to do. Like putting your seatbelt on because turbulences. And that's important. Always follow the captain's order. Whee. Now, my little brainiacs, look at this. You don't usually get to see a plane in this state. It's not finished. And that's because there's so much to a plane that we can't see. As you can see, 
There's cables running almost everywhere. And that's normal. That's, you know, to give power to your screens, to the light, and even, you know, transmit Wi-Fi to your phone. But there's also tubes. And this is for air conditioning. Because as I said, we need to control the temperature and also have enough air in the plane to breathe. As on the outside, it's very, very cold. So, you know, it's important. Now, I talked about where you can put the small luggage, but where can you put the big one? Well, as you see, this here is the floor, and you're usually over it. But right under, there's the hold. And in the hold, you have enough space to put a car! Who? Who would have thought? Now, usually you put luggages here, because as I said, you don't go on a trip with nothing. No! You have to have some luggage with, you know, some extra pants, extra underwear, extra t-shirt, extra jumpers and stuff like that. And so this is where they are stocked during the flight. And then, you know, they are taken out and given back to you when you arrive at destination. Isn't that neat? Hey, my little brainiac. Now, this is one of the most interesting features of the jumbo jet. That's right, the Boeing 747 actually has stairs. And why is that important? Well, that's because it's one of two planes which actually has a second story. Come with me, there's cool stuff up there. So, where do those staircases go? <gasps> to the second floor. But what's on the second floor? Well, that's the very interesting part. See, right behind me, you have the cockpit. This is where the pilots, because there are two pilots, fly the plane. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. My name is Kitty, and we will be flying today to New York. Please sit back, relax, and we wish you a pleasant flight. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so, if you want to see more adventures. Now, as you can see, there's so many screams, bits and bobs and everything here, but not that much when you think about it, because most of it is just duplicated. There's two different versions, because there's a captain and a co-captain. Now, you don't want an untrained captain, and you can't have somebody who is untrained fly a plane. So, you actually put one in one of those. This is a simulator. Those are screens which actually shows simulations of what we'd be doing pressing all those buttons. So that when captains do this, they are ready to fly the real thing. Now, it's time to leave and check the rest of it. Oh, hi my little brainiacs. You could see me through the window. <laughs> oh, hello there. Now, of course on a plane, as mentioned, there is a pilot and a captain. So, they have to pilot and fly the plane to make sure you're safe. But, they're not the only one aboard here for you. You also have the flight crew, also called the flight attendant. And they are here to make sure you are safe, comfortable. They will serve you food, snack and drinks when in your flight. And also, you know, take care of you because it can be stressful for some people. Hello! Ah, how nice it is to be here. Ooh, I'm just gonna pop my little tray out and ooh, take a bit of fresh air. Now, of course, there's actually a window in real pain, so you can't do that. <laughs> oh, excuse me, uh, could I have a little soda pop? Oh, thank you. Sir, here's your little soda pop. And of course, one of the most important rules is to remind people of the safety in a plane. Ladies and gentlemen, you are reminded that there are emergency exits at the front and rear of the plane. Please remember to fasten your seatbelt at takeoff and landing, and of course during the flight when indicated because of turbulences. Please enjoy your flight to Kitty City and have a wonderful day. Whee! Humans are real copycats. They've always wanted to be like the birds and learn to fly. It all started long ago in Greece with the legend of Icarus. Icarus had the great idea of sticking wings on his back with wax. He flew up, up into the sky, but as he got closer and closer to the sun, the wax started to melt Ow! and the wings came unstuck and so did poor Icarus. A long time later, two brilliant brothers had the cool idea of filling a balloon with hot air. 
the hot air rises, lifting the Mongolfia balloon up into the blue beyond. And for the first time, people saw how the world looked from high in the sky. After hot air balloons came aeroplanes and gliders. A hundred years ago, the daring Frenchman Louis Blériot was the first to fly across the sea between France and England. Aeroplanes are everywhere now and the world keeps getting smaller and smaller every day. Now, my little brainiacs, there's four things you need to know if you want to correctly fly a plane. First thing you need to keep in mind is speed, as speed will allow you to first lift off and secondly stay in the air. Look how fast I'm spinning it! This is surely gonna take off eventually! Now, the second thing, of course, wait, you need to. I don't want to stand up quite tall. Now, the second thing you need to keep in mind is altitude, how high the plane is in the sky. You don't want it to be too low or you'll hit a mountain and you don't want it to be too high because then you get really scared. Look at it, up and down. Up and down. <laughs> then one of the most important parts is inclination. Because the thing is, this is what will determine basically if you're going up or down or even turning like this or like this. The planes don't usually do that, but I can, so I will. And then, of course, direction. This is important if you want to go, you know, somewhere like New York or Tokyo, or if you just want to have fun. Oh, look at that. Now, the thing is, why do planes have wheels and how do they fly? Well, that's one simple answer. The thing is, planes have wings like those which allow them to fly. And they have wheels so that they can roll basically on the tarmac and build up speed in order to have enough air to go under the wings and have lift off. Ooh. Ooh, that's a lot of air. Ooh. Now, of course, one thing which is really important and you have to do with everything, like a car or anything you own, is to do the safety checks. Make sure the fuselage is intact and immaculate. Make sure the rudders are working just like it should. If there are any problems, you should see them. It's important because a plane trip can easily go wrong and you don't want that. So check everything to be sure. <laughs> Hey there, my little brainiacs. Now this is a helicopter. It's another type of aircraft, a bit different than the aeroplane. Both flies, but in a very different way. The aeroplane has, you know, jet engines and propeller engine. This one has rotors, so huge blades just spinning very, very fast. And so the takeoff is slightly different. Look, this is how it will take off eventually. As you can see, wow. They spin really, really fast and eventually it will just take off upright. It doesn't have to speed up and then take off. No, no, it just goes up in a straight line, which make it so much more precise for interventions like for the police department, firefighters, emergency services. Helicopters carry a lot less passengers than aeroplanes because they are a lot smaller. A lot more precise, but a lot smaller than aeroplanes. Isn't that neat? Well, that was a busy day, but you know what? We've learned so much. But what exactly did we learn? Time to check it with the Kiddy Quiz. I hope you're ready. Here's the first question out of three. First question. How many passengers can carry an A380? Is it A, about 800, or B, 12? Timer. The question is, how many passengers can carry an A380? Ah, time's up. So, let me hear it. That's right, an A380 
can carry up to 800 passengers. That's eight, zero, zero. You did great. Second question. Okay, so from which room does the air traffic controller guide planes? Is it A, from mummy's kitchen, or B, the control tower? Time up. The question is, from which room does the air traffic controller guide plane? Time's up. So let's hear your answer. That's right. The air traffic controllers guide planes from the control tower. C O N T R O L T O W E R. Congratulations. Okay, now third question, which is who is the plane's boss? Is it A, my daddy, or B, the captain? Timer. The question is, who is the plane's boss? Ah, time's up. So, what's your answer? That's right, the plane's boss is the captain. C, A, B, T, A, I, N. Congratulations, you did great on this quiz. And you know what? When you get a great score, you get a gift. I hope you're ready for yours. Let's go. Whoa! More than that, a blast. I hope you had fun with this adventure and you're ready for more, but that would be for next time. So if you want to see those, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And now it's time to dance. So get up, get on your feet, and I hope you're ready. Okay, because it's go in three, two, one, dance time. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. 